Hello everyone. So this is a St. Patrick's Day episode and hopefully it'll either be up by St. Patrick's Day. If you listened to the last episode, we were talking about pumpkin spice in March. So we're going to hope for the best. Plan for the worst, but hope for the best. So St. Patrick's Day. Are you Irish? I'm not Irish. I am American. So you you probably do some sort of celebra- celebratory act. You wear green. You eat corned beef and hash. You wear a shamrock pin or you get a shamrock shake. But I was more curious about uh, the history behind eating corned beef hash, or not corned beef hash, eating corned beef and cabbage. So I did some research and this may shock you if you've never looked into anything about St. Patrick's Day. So here we go. St. Patrick, let's start with that. Who who was he? So St. Patrick was the patron, is the patron saint, and national apostle of Ireland. He is credited with bringing Christianity to Ireland. And there are a couple legends about him. One is that he drove the snakes out of Ireland and used the shamrock to explain the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, originally, traditionally, St. Patrick's Day was a modest day, steeped in religion, you spent time with family, pubs were closed, instead of going out to have a have a Guinness, pubs were closed, and it was, that's how for the longest time, St. Patrick's Day was celebrated in Ireland, probably a day of, there was probably um, a feast. You know, on holidays, you get together with your family, you have a big spread. So the celebration in America was obviously brought over by the Irish immigrants. And the big, I don't know if it's the only big immigration, but when the potato blight happened, the potato famine happened in Ireland, a lot of Irish people came to America. So they brought traditions with them, their holidays. So the celebration that we have now in the U.S., eventually got back to Ireland and they use it as like a touristy thing. But I mean, I doubt that, I doubt that all the Irish folk are up in arms and against the celebration of uh, parades, drinking, feasting, celebrating. I'm sure there might be some traditional folk who are like, this is not how it was supposed to be. But I think, let me know if I'm wrong, people from Ireland, if there's anyone from Ireland who listens to this podcast, uh, do you dislike the American celebration or the American style of celebration for St. Patrick's Day? Um, But getting back to corned beef and cabbage, so the traditional Irish meal was boiled bacon, and it sounds like it wasn't specifically like bacon today that's smoked. Um, It was bacon, also known as salt pork. So I think it was salt cured, but not smoked, like American bacon is these days. And it was a cheap, it was a cheap meat. Pork was very prevalent in Ireland at the time, whereas beef was not. For a long time, cows were considered a sacred animal, and they were used for labor and milk, and they weren't, they didn't become meat animals until they were too old to work or produce milk. So when the Irish folks immigrated to America, they wanted a taste of their homeland, so a traditional meal of salt pork and possibly cabbage, a vegetable. Um, Bacon, pork, was relatively expensive in America compared to beef. So it was like the complete opposite of the pricing in Ireland at the time. So the Irish found something similar to the texture of their salt pork, which was corned beef. So beef was a cheap meat and cabbage was one of the cheapest vegetables, so you put those two together, it gives you a pretty hearty meal. Corned beef is 
usually made with the brisket, which is one of the cheapest cuts of beef. And it's called corned beef because of, there's no corn involved, but it's the size of the rock salt granule. I don't even think you can call it a granule. A granule is too small, but the size of the rock salt that was used to cure the meat. So corn sized grains of salt were used to dry cure the meat. And so corned beef is often thought of as an Irish food because we associate it with St. Patrick's Day, but it has Eastern European roots and it's very much a Jewish cuisine. And it made me think of the podcast episode I did on salt. And kosher salt isn't called kosher salt because it itself is kosher. The title kosher salt comes from that is the salt size that is used in the process of koshering. So it pulls out any moisture and blood from the meat. So that's what it, that's what it made me think. That's what the salt curing reminded me of. So it didn't surprise me that it's really a Jewish cuisine, corned beef. So corned beef is also sometimes called pickled beef because usually it's put, the beef is put in a brine, so water and salt and spices. So it is sometimes called, also known as pickled beef. So like I said, corned beef is beef brisket. It's salt cured or brined. I don't know if sometimes it's dry salt, salt cured without water, just like packed in salt and cured that way. Um, but nowadays I'm pretty sure it's soaked in a brine for quite a long period of time. One of my sources said like two to three weeks, which is a very long time. I don't know if the two to three weeks is for a dry salt brine because I feel like two to three weeks in a water brine would like over tenderize the meat and you would like lose the, it would like literally start to break apart the meat. I don't know. That's not what this episode is about. But now um, making corned beef, it's cured, brined uh, with a mixture of salt, sugar, and spices. And it is either boiled, slow cooked, or baked. And I will leave a link below for a website that gives instructions for if you want to boil it, if you want to slow cook it, or if you want to bake it. With that... I have always thought of boiling meat as a really bad option because I think of like if you just boil some chicken breasts, I'm like, there's just no flavor in that. But I read, reading on corned beef, it makes more sense because you have cured the meat in so much salt that when you boil it, It draws out the excess salt, but you still have salt that remains that gives you a good flavor. So what is eaten in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day? It's usually lamb or bacon. And I don't know if it's more like American bacon or if it's old school bacon. Either way, it's usually not corned beef. You'll probably find pubs and restaurants that sell corned beef in Ireland for the tourists. So I didn't think this, but a couple sources were sure to make the point that corned beef and cabbage is not the national dish of Ireland. I don't even know, is there a national dish of Ireland? I don't know. Is there a national dish of America? I think of the hot dog, but that would be unfortunate. Some other traditional uh, Irish foods that you may enjoy on your St. Patrick's Day is uh, Irish soda bread. And there is no soda or pop in Irish soda bread. It, it is soda bread because it uses baking soda as the leavener. And so I don't think it uses yeast. I didn't look it up. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the soda, baking soda, is the leavener and it gives the bread a distinct flavor versus, I'm, that's why I'm thinking, versus a yeast bread. Or is there some yeast and some baking soda? Not sure, but you're going to get a different flavor out of it. And traditionally, Irish soda bread, it did not have fruit in it, but some versions would have dried fruit in it, and then that would be had with your tea versus with dinner. Guinness, I know that's not a food, but 
Irish beer. And there's a little, I, I gathered us a tiny bit of information about Guinness. Production of it started in Dublin in 19, not 19, in 1759, but it wasn't public, publicly available until 1769. So 10 years later. And my source said that the first barrels of that beer were shipped to England. So it wasn't even for the Irish folks. It was shipped to England. Um, And then it was 71 years later, so if my math is correct, 1840 before Guinness made it to New York. And then the last uh, Irish food that I gathered for this podcast is Colcannon, C-O-L-C-A-N-N-O-N. And it is boiled potatoes mashed up with cabbage or kale and mixed with onions and butter or cream. And it made me think of this Irish cabbage with cheddar recipe that I made last year. And I will link that down below because that was delicious. So it's not exactly the same thing because you use hash browns and there's cheese, but it was really delicious. And so if you're looking for something to make to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I will leave that recipe link down below, along with, like I said, links to recipes for corned beef. Now, you are able to buy pre-cooked corned beef, so don't fret if you're like, I don't have two to three weeks to cure my cor- my brisket. Don't worry. Let me know. Do you like corned beef? Is it overrated? That's a good question. Is corned beef overrated? I like corned beef hash, The one time I had corned beef and cabbage, I think I was disappointed. But now that we know the history of it, it wasn't necessarily a glamorous food. It was just something that reminded the Irish immigrants of their hometown, of their homeland. And corned beef and cabbage was cost effective for them. So if you don't have corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day, you're not. It's neither, it's neither good nor bad. So do whatever you want to celebrate and St. Patrick's Day. Of course, be safe. And uh, subscribe or follow if you want more content like this. Thanks for listening. Remember that Jesus loves you and he wants a relationship with you.